We had an executive session, however, no votes were taken in the executive session. On the correspondence, we have uh, two resolutions, one from the North Kingstown School Committee and the Smithfield School Committee. What is the committee's pleasure on these resolutions? Oh, should be placed on file, <laughs> unless we want to vote on uh, concurring with them. Motion by Mr. Marciano to uh, place on file. Is there a second? Second. Second by Mr. De Silva. Any questions? All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Respondents <laughs> from Mr. Mike, representing the custodial union, asking that uh, we effectuate uh, negotiations uh, as soon as possible with the custodial union. Uh, relative to that request, I'm going to appoint Mr. Andriozzi as chair of that committee and the other two members that will participate in the negotiation committee will be Mr. De Silva and Mr. Marciano. So I would ask that uh, Mr. Andriozzi to the superintendent or Mr. Scunjo to contact um, Mr. Mullane to let him know that a uh, committee has been set up and negotiations will be forthcoming. Superintendent's report. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. The first item on the agenda is the project building update presented by Colliers. Gentlemen, just state your name for the record. Sure. Um, yeah, for those of you that I haven't met previously, uh, my name is Chad Healy. Oh, is this on? Hello? Um, yeah, for those of you on this board that I haven't met yet, um, my name is Chad Healy. I'm a project manager with Colliers International. Uh, I'm here with Martin Dow, uh, one of my colleagues out of the Providence office. Um, we were hired by the town of North Providence to provide um, Clerk of the Work Services for uh, the $75 million bond, uh, which includes the construction of the two new schools, Stephen Olney and McGuire, uh, as well as uh, health and safety improvements to other schools in the district. Could you people in the back see that screen? No, you might want to move over. Okay. Um, as I mentioned, uh, this this presentation will be uh, to cover the current construction ongoing with both Stephen Olney and McGuire Elementary, as well as uh, the health and safety upgrades to the district, um, to the other district schools. Uh, so we'll be starting with project teams, uh, then proceeding with the building specifications, uh, point of interest for both schools, uh, some health and safety or improvements, and uh, coordination and communications um, with the town. So starting with project teams, uh, as I mentioned earlier, we were hired by the town um, 
to be the primary point of contact with any concerns or questions that they may have. Um, we then take those and meet with the either the design or construction team or both, and um, the information gets distributed from there. Uh, SLAM, as the architect for both Olney and McGuire schools, um, is using Studio Jade, O'Day Engineers, and Garofalo uh, as support. And then for the health and safety improvements, um, the, the only change in team members uh, would be the architect handling these improvements is Toronto Architects. And then beginning with the building specification summary, um, I'm not gonna bore everyone with specific numbers, but you'll see them on the screen there. Um, in short, what that information describes is that the two new schools are that are um, replacing the existing uh, will have about a little more than double um, the usable space uh, of the ones they replace. Um, so s starting up here, um, let's see if I can, all right, uh, hopefully you can see my arrow here, but if you're looking in the upper right corner um, and that photo there, these, these three photos on this page are renderings uh, that were originally generated by SLAM, um, the architect for the Olney and McGuire schools. Um, Starting with the slide up here, you'll see the entrance to Olney from Salem Street. Uh, you'll see a number of uh, rectangular windows of varying sizes. Um, these windows are uh, at the library for Olney, and um, the various sizes are uh, meant to inspire play and, and um, uh, imagination among the students. So then moving down to the lower right here, uh, you'll see a rendering of the uh, cafeteria, which also doubles as an auditorium. Um, the stage over here is actually on a raised platform uh, with a ramp running along right here. Um, the idea was to keep this an open space to have it very inviting for after school activities and events. And then the next item over to the left here is uh, referred to as a Da Vinci Room. Um, the main purpose for the Da, Vin da Vinci Room is uh, for science projects and um, you know projects that will take up a sizable amount of space that you don't want cluttering a classroom uh, and that are off awfully messy uh, can be handled in this room. They don't need to be transported out of this room. All work um, and, and imagination can happen here and not have to be brought throughout the school. So then with McGuire, um, similar information over here, the numbers are slightly different, uh, but in short, the new schools are about twice the size of the existing that they're replacing. Um, you'll see here we have a bird box, uh, which is what we refer to them as. It's basically a creative and fun uh, seating location uh, for students. And off to the right here is a, um, it, it, it's referred to as a, uh, um, drawing a blank at the term, but it essentially it's uh, spaces within the hallway um, in the public space where you can arrange the furniture however the school department um, feels at any one particular moment for whatever reason they, they need to use the space for. Uh, but the intent is to make it so that you're learning not just when you enter the classroom, but as soon as you enter the school. Um, and to pro provide some flexibility for programs. And you'll see down below, this is a pretty close to full elevation of the uh, McGuire School along Central Ave. So for points of interest, a few places to highlight. Um, if you're looking at this photo here, you'll see uh, a good example of one of the many open and airy spaces uh, that the d design team worked on. Uh, this will be the central stairs. It's directly off of the vestibule. Um, so it's one of the first spaces you'll see as you enter the building. Um, we have large staircase leading up to the Da Vinci space that I mentioned earlier. Um, 
this there will be a wall built right here that closes off this space slightly and that was just to accommodate some uh, fire code measures but for the most part this is what you'll be seeing and here's a closer view of the DaVinci space in progress and um, I also wanted to provide this slide here which shows a dedicated tree that was previously dedicated to a fallen soldier um, at the previous only elementary school site uh, with the new layout it was going to be in the way and rather than get rid of it uh, we wanted to do our best to save it uh, so we've relocated it to this corner uh, which is a pretty key corner um, you'll be able to see it coming down Douglas or coming up Salem so there's no guarantee that the tree will survive but we've taken extra measures um, including bringing an arborist out to the site uh, to um, try and make sure it's got the best chance of surviving uh, for the coming season. And then we have what's referred to as enrichment spaces. Uh, these are at both schools. Um, basically they're jut outs into the hallway and miniature classrooms that uh, teachers can use for more kind of one-on-one -on -one or, or small group learning. Uh, again, providing additional flexibility to the spaces. Um, you'll see this one's very much in progress. I have one a little later in the slides that is a little more complete than this one, uh, but that gives you an idea. And then we have uh, similar to what I mentioned earlier with these windows in the rendering. Um, we have windows that wrap the corner of the building that look pretty seamless. Uh, there is structure in the middle there at the corner, but it, it's hard to tell. It kind of blends very fluidly. And then uh, you also have a sp an upper level of windows that uh, actually go around the entire exterior perimeter of the gym. And that's the case for both schools as well. So the birdhouses that I mentioned, here are a couple framed out um, at McGuire as it is today. Uh, the intent here is to actually provide a viewing window down into the first floor, uh, connecting both the first and second floor spaces. Um, you'll see another connection here, which is actually the reading nook. Uh, this, is a this photo was taken from the second floor looking down uh, into that reading nook. And again, it's just to create a very open space out of two levels. And you'll see here that we have a porch uh, facing Cottage Street, or Cottage Avenue rather, um, at the back of the McGuire School, uh, where the majority of the visitor parking will be. And um, here's the example that I mentioned earlier for the enrichment spaces. Uh, you'll see some built-in uh, cubby spaces and storage. Uh, that's actually to be used in the learning commons that I mentioned earlier, um, which are the, the kind of spaces built up with furniture, not necessarily anything um, stationary or immovable, um, just spaces that you can kind of tailor to um, whatever needs you have at the time. And then uh, we have some colorful circular windows. Um, these you may have seen in the rendering. Uh, they're facing Central Ave. So if you're coming down like Cold Spring Avenue, for example, uh, you'll see those all the way from the top. Um, draws interest to the school. It's one of the first things the students will see. Um, and just inspires creativity from the get-go. So I'll, I'll Take it from here and hand it over to Martin Dow. Yep, great. Thank you. So I just wanted to run a little bit through the health and safety improvements this evening with you. Uh, this is a roughly $16 million project uh, that we're OPMing for the town. Um, and I'll kind of go through these a little bit quickly because there's a lot of items on here just so it doesn't get too um, draggy. But um, starting with Greystone, we're going to be renovating four bathrooms. Uh, that work is scheduled to commence on June, I'm sorry, on, yes, June 11th and uh, completion in whole for August 15th of 2019. We'll also be doing ADA improvements at the entryway, uh, canopy renovations and drainage at the entranceway as well, and site work, which is uh, currently being bid out at the moment. And completed work to date is the roof, which was completed in 2018. 
At Centerdale, we are working on site work design drawings. They're in progress. We have four options that we're considering. I'll be meeting with uh, the superintendent, uh, Chairman Pilato, and uh, the principal tomorrow morning uh, to consider some final designs. Uh, the traffic impact study is underway, and it is part of that site work design. Uh, as well, the completed work to date, uh, the roof was completed in 2018. For the high school, we are working on uh, fire alarm system upgrades, cabling devices and panels, uh, rooftop unit repairs and replacements as well to improve the air circulation. Uh, two larger units are gonna be rebuilt and five smaller units are gonna be replaced. And again, the roof was replaced in 2018. For the Ritchie Middle School, we are working to address cracking and concrete walls uh, that have been taking place for quite a while now. Uh, the engineers have been hired to study the problem and make recommendations. Uh, we're attempting to see if insurance will cover the cost. Uh, the mayor's office is working on that to see if there's any feedback from the trust, which is the insurance carrier. Um, we're monitoring the movement of the crack uh, in the walls uh, for a 12 month period with the engineers. Uh, to this date, there has been no measurable movement since November 2018. So that will continue uh, throughout the summer months as well, and we'll continue to monitor that. Uh, as well, we're receiving a monthly statement from the engineers that the building remains safe to occupy at all times. Uh, the town may solicit cost estimates once we get the design and recommended uh, uh, actions to be taken by the engineers. Uh, and again, the completed work uh, to date is that the roof was done in 2018. For Birchwood, we're replacing three old rooftop units with new. Uh, the architects are currently working on sizing and confirming that we can do a direct replacement with those. And again, the completed work to date is that the roof was completed in 2018. Uh, for Wayland, we have no further improvements planned at this time. Uh, the roof was replaced in 2017. Chair? Um, and then, the other uh, point I wanted to make was uh, that we've worked very closely with the town uh, th through various means of coordination. Um, beginning with the facilities committee, we meet every Tuesday. Uh, that way, any questions that come up, we're able to address right then and there. Uh, nothing really gets set on the back burner. Um, the school principals have been involved. Both Janine and Bruce have walked the site. Uh, they've joined us for various meetings uh, to provide their opinion and, and direction. Um, superintendents of buildings, Jim Feroli, uh, he's been a huge help. Uh, works in the office next to mine, so um, he's able to be involved in the every decision um, that we've been making. Uh, communications director, uh, same idea, Ralph has been a huge help. Um, his knowledge with not just the uh, systems that we're incorporating in these two new schools, but also just general understanding of uh, how the district works um, has been a huge help. And then uh, we've had various meetings and um, conference calls and plenty of email chains uh, with uh, Captain Horan from the North Providence Fire Department and uh, Ben Nasenzi as well. Um, both of them have walked the sites multiple times and I'm currently working out of time to, to bring them back out. So that, that about summarizes where we are today. Um, does anyone have any immediate questions? Any member have any questions? Thank you very much, gentlemen. Nice job. Thank you. One question we ask every week, it's on budget, on time. It is, yes. Thank you. Thank you. Good job. Continuing with the uh, superintendent's report, the next item on my agenda is an update on the Northern Rhode Island Collaborative. So at this time, there is some tentatively optimistic news coming out of the Northern Rhode Island Collaborative. Uh, the executive director and the leadership team there have taken necessary steps to streamline the organization and reduce costs. And uh, the organization has proposed an operating budget for fiscal year 2020. So they do plan on attempting to operate next year, and that budget forecasts um, a small surplus. 
there are still a, a lot of variables before we can say it's definitely a go. Um, we are wa awaiting the, re the results of an audit that is currently underway and legal advice. But at this point, the plan is for the collaborative to continue on to next year at this point. So I just wanted the committee to be aware of that and if you have any questions. Uh, the question was, is, is Cumberland still a member of the Northern Rhine Collaborative? And uh, they did withdraw a couple of months ago. Next item on the agenda is the process for hiring a new high school principal. Wanted to update the committee and the community on that as well. So uh, tomorrow, um, Human Resources will post on school spring and internally the uh, high school principal uh, job posting, job description. It'll be um, posted and open for about three weeks. The plan is to um, also tomorrow, we have an interview committee that's um, been uh, established. So Human Resources will notify the members of the um, interview committee that consists of um, parents and teachers and building administrators at the high school that there will be an interview process um, that will take place probably in late March or early April. Uh, once the posting closes, the central office will screen the applications and then refer to the interview committee uh, a list of people to interview. And the hope is that we will have a recommendation at the April school committee meeting for the school committee to consider. Uh, and that person hopefully would begin the job uh, effective July 1. Any questions? Next item is the process for hiring a new special education director. That position has been posted. Um, it's going on three and a half weeks now. Um, we do have a committee established as well for that. And that does include um, parents, teachers, building level and central office administrators. And that committee will begin um, interviewing applicants soon. And the timeline for that is to hopefully have an, uh, a recommendation to the school committee in sometime in March. Uh, and have that person appointed in March. That person would then, if it's not an internal candidate, um, have to give notice to his or her district and then hopefully start for us sometime in April, allowing that person to uh, transition with our interim special ed director, Susan Moore. So that is the timeline for filling that position. Any questions? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Goho. Next item on the agenda are school committee reports. Moving on to the consent agenda. If there are no questions on the consent agenda, the chair would uh, uh, move move we, uh, accept the motion. Yeah, uh, make a motion that we pass the uh, consent agenda as presented. Second. Motion made by Mr. Marciano, seconded by Mr. DeSofa. Questions? Uh, Mr. Chairman, just a question. Does the consent agenda consist of the uh, upcoming calendar school calendar no correct no that's on the new business thank you we have a motion and a second all those in favor Aye. opposed we have no old business moving on to new business you have in front of you um, school department organizational chart the chair will entertain a motion to accept that organizational chart Motion to uh, accept the organizational chart as presented. Second. Motion made by Mr. Marciano, seconded by Mr. Andriozzi. Questions? All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. <clears throat> Second item under new business is approval of the 2019-2020 school calendar. Accept a motion for that discussion. Motion Mr. made Andrew to Ozzie. approve Let's the uh, um, motion made to approve the calendar. Second. Motion made. Is there a second? And that. Seconded by Mr. Marciano. Discussion. Mr. Andriozzi. Yes, sir. So um, a few years back, we were dealing with, and in, in this district still has a uh, serious uh, problem of absenteeism. Um, in 2000. 13 and 14, we had an exorbitant amount of both teachers and students absent on the day before Thanksgiving. Um, we felt it was, with the data that we had, 
the smarter move to ensure that the children received the 180 days of learning that they deserve, that we would give the day before Thanksgiving, the Wednesday, uh, a day off. Um, and I see in this year's calendar that it is uh, schools in session that day. And I'd just like to ask, um, you know, why, why we're going back to this uh, when we know we had a serious problem with absenteeism, again, both with staff and children. Yeah, Mr. Goho. So um, super interim superintendent O'Brien drafted this calendar with input uh, from the teachers union um, and others, central office administrators, and then um, also myself when I was appointed. So some of the factors that went into the, the development of this calendar is that we are starting everything uh, after Labor Day. We are expecting that the new buildings will be um, ready for occupancy the week before Labor Day. Um, but out of abundance of caution, it was decided that even the professional development days, uh, the teacher orientation day and professional development day, everything would start after Labor Day. In theory, what we would like to do going forward would be to have what most districts do, which is to have their teacher orientation day and their professional development day occur on the Wednesday and the Thursday before Labor Day weekend, and then have Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and Monday off before the children would arrive on the Tuesday. But with the new construction of the student schools, that really wasn't the wisest choice. So we decided to start everything after Labor Day. Um, the other issue is uh, the in lieu of the February vacation, uh, it was voted on a number of years ago, I believe, that the Monday and the Tuesday would be reserved for uh, the break for February for North Providence. And so all of the states, all of the districts across the state either have that week off entirely or they have the Monday and the Tuesday off. So if we took away the Tuesday after President's Day, that would potentially um, impact our staff as well with their own children uh, having the day off from school. Um, we talked about also the Christmas vacation. Uh, we're coming back on Thursday, January 2nd. There was some talk about having a, the two weeks of vacation. While that would be nice, uh, the issue there is that we have many working families who do not have those days off, and that would pose a hardship on families as well. So we decided to come back on the Thursday rather than have the two weeks of vacation. And then currently the school year ends on a clean Friday of June 12th. So those are some of the factors that went into the development of the calendar as I was updated um, when I, when I took over, but this was already drafted at that point. So hypothetically, this could be just a one year um, uh, uh, calendar. And going forward, if we started school prior to Labor Day, we could reinstitute the day before Thanksgiving again, or is this gonna be a permanent um, calendar from this point forward because again the data that we had prior to instituting it was there was an abundance of absenteeism um, but if i may mr chair um yeah i looked at that data and, and you're, you're correct uh, the data does show a decrease in staff and student attendance on that day we have not looked at other days throughout the calendar where that likely occurs as well before other vacations um so i'm sure that that is probably a factor that you would see throughout the school year. Um, the other issue for the future would be, like for example, next year you'll have primary day and you'll have election day. So you'll have two days added to the calendar there. And if there's any future added professional development days to the calendar. So all those factors would have to be considered by the committee at that time. Follow up. Mr. Picard. I actually, I'm not opposed to the November because I, I would be interested to know if even Tuesday if there was a change. So do we see the same number of attendance issue on the Tuesday if we give the Wednesday off? I think in essence, I don't, like, like Joe said, I'm not really sure that April 9th you wouldn't see an increase uh, just like you wouldn't before Memorial Day. I think you, you'd probably find trends that families take additional time if necessary or ask for a personal day. But I don't think it's um, just November. I think actually it, it, it's impacted throughout. If I may, if, if I'm not mistaken, I believe when uh, Superintendent Smith was here, she kept data and that was the glaring day 
where we saw the biggest spike in absenteeism on both sides of the, ch the children and the teachers. And that's why we chose that day, if I'm not mistaken, to offer it as a day off um, to keep the calendar full at 180 days. Um, I understand that it can happen any day, and I'm sure it happens after a, you know, a Sunday night Patriot football game where attendance is low. I'm sure of that. Um, we, we could go on and on and on as to you know how many days would show up on the calendar where there's extra days off. I'm just saying that this habitually over time has shown that it was uh, a high absentee day, and that's why the committee prior to this committee uh, instituted it as a day off. Any other questions or concerns? And these are one year, one year. Yeah, yeah but Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman. Yeah, the, yeah maybe. Marciano. Yeah, maybe that can be just revisited next year. To, to, you know. Okay. There's a motion on the floor, and there's a second. Any additional questions? All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Nay. Motion carries. Item D is a service animal, school policy, second reading. Are there any questions relative to that? If not, moving on to item E, discussion action of the youth risk behavior survey. We're gonna go back to it. Oh, thanks, Bobby. okay. Well, let's talk about this survey first. Okay, so by policy, any request for a survey to be implemented in our schools has to be approved by the school committee. So I've included in your packet the um, recent request that we received from the Rhode Island Department of Health, which, was, which is for the uh, middle schools and the high school to implement, implement the youth risk behavior survey. Uh, so just a little bit of a background on this. Um, this is a survey that the state um, offers an incentive, a $500 incentive to the schools who implement it and they use the data to form their direction at the Rhode Island Department of Health. Uh, this survey is not, is not tied to any direct funding or grant funding relative to North Providence. Um, if we decide to go ahead with this survey, the schools that do it would receive a $500 stipend for implementing the survey. Um, just a note that we've received, we're, we're expecting to receive requests from three for three surveys to be implemented in the schools. Actually, one is not a request. One is mandated, and that is the survey work survey, which is currently underway. So all of our students across the district are currently uh, providing that survey to the state, and it provides a lot of the information, very similar information that you see in other surveys that come from the state as well. So that's going to be a good, very comprehensive survey that will inform the state and the community and the schools as well. So you have that. You have the risk behavior survey, which is in your packet, and that is a voluntary survey with a stipend. Uh, for the schools and then the third survey that we will probably get a request for is called the Rhode Island student survey um, which may or may not be necessarily tied to grant funding within the town but the one that you have before you is the youth risk behavior survey and so it's at the pleasure of the committee as to whether or not you'd like to implement this survey in our schools Mr. Mr. chair a question <coughs> Mr. DeSilva uh, do parents need to sign off on this yes if I'm a parent, in order for my child to take the survey, do I have to sign, or do I sign a waiver if I don't want them to? The, the survey is voluntary, and um, students can opt not to answer certain questions. Um, in the past, the concern has been with these surveys, uh, the impact on instructional time. So that, that's my question. Um, what's your recommendation as the superintendent that, um, because I also worry about the number of things we ask are, teachers and students do that take away from the academic time. I concur with that. Mr. Chairman, a question? Mr. Andreozzi. Is this a survey that can be sent home and uh, done at home where it doesn't interfere with our instructional time and it also allows the parents to get a look at it because some of the questions are, are in, in my mind are a little disturbing um, there's a few of them that uh, you know <laughs> I'd like to know the answer myself 
if if I had a child, uh, you know, if <laughs> what they were doing, because some of them are really they're out there. To answer that question, no, the survey has to be implemented in the school in the school building. Has the district conducted this survey in the past? I believe in the past it might have, but I believe uh, in the last two years the school committee uh, voted not to implement these surveys other than the one that is mandated by the Department of Ed, which is the survey work survey. Yeah, my recollection of that, I th you, you could be right. I have to look, look back, look at that. I thought we decided to do it after school hours, but I, I could be wrong. But right, that's the Rhode Island student survey that we're expecting a request for that too at some point. But again, this is an incentive-based survey. There's no direct uh, benefit to the school other than the $500 stipend. Any other questions? What's the preference of the committee? For the sake of making a motion, I'll make a motion to allow the youth risk behavior survey to be given to our schools. If I don't get a second. I'll second it. <laughs> <laughs> then I'll Mr. Marciano, did you second that motion? Yes. <clears throat> There's a motion and a second. Any additional questions or concerns? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, why don't we take a roll call vote? Mr. Pollock? Mr. Marciano? Mrs. Picard? Mr. DeSilva? Mr. Corsini? Aye. Mr. Andriozzi? Nay. Chair votes aye. Motion carries. Discussion of the textbooks from North Providence High School. Chair will entertain a motion to approve. So move. Mr. Marciano. Second. Seconded by Mr. Andriozzi. Any questions? All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Discussion and action relative to the high school baseball field. I, Mr. Uh, De Silva. I put that on the agenda. So last, in November, we, in November, the committee granted school uh, baseball use to two organizations. One is the Babe Ruth League, which has been there for many moons, and the other was the North Providence, the new North Providence Little League. Now, my son played at Babe Ruth. It was a wonderful experience, and I am still involved in Little League. It's my understanding that the, the Little League has, both Little Leagues have merged. So it's North Province Little League, and there is a junior division, which means that children can play in Little Leagues across the state um, once they graduate from the 12-year-old program and they can play in 13, 14-year-old. It's similar to what Babe Ruth runs. Evidently, and I do remember saying this in November, that when we passed both of these, that it's always been the policy of this committee that the people who have property use work it out. Um, and in the past I've sat and we've worked things out. And I know Mr. Zamorelli is here from Babe Ruth and he's always been accommodating and he does work things out. Um, so as I look at these requests, and, and I'll just preface my remarks by saying that the, um, the Babe Ruth has put a lot of time, money uh, into that field in terms of dugouts, uh, the field preparation, um, batting cages, and over the year they've always um, raised money and put the money back into the field. And, and, they, and then they use the field, obviously, once the high school program is done. Um, it is my understanding that the Little League wants to have a junior league, and they would not be obviously playing big Ruth teams, they would be playing other Little League teams. Their season is much shorter. It goes from, I have it here, April to the end of June. So it's a traditional spring baseball little league feel. I know they put in from nine to three on Saturday and Sundays. Um, it's my understanding that it's just the morning that they want to use for a game 
And all that practices, I believe, are at Birchwood because they uh, took our property use at the Birchwood. So I don't know. Uh, I know Mr. Mr. Zamorelli is here to speak if he wants to speak. Um, he did send me a communication in terms of what Babe Ruth has done over the years, and I totally know that, having been um, a, 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 a child who played there and, you know, continuing to um, – monitor their uh, their success rates when they when when they win their championships um I, I still think that we can go forward with working this out um and if i and if jimmy Feroli and i have to sit in a room and do this perhaps we can um i think part of the problem is when the little league did this they didn't communicate it properly and there may be some oh ruffled feathers or um maybe not ruffle feathers, just lack of communication, which has now gotten people um, worried about playing time. Also, there's a, th those fellows over there also are bringing in a Legion team, and I know that Legion team has the blessing of the high school um, program too. Lou, did you wanna talk at all over here? Let the committee know your concerns. I did put it on um, so you could address the committee, uh, you've been around for a long, long time. I, I still think there's a way to work this out. Thank you, Mr. DeSilver, uh, Mr. Chairman Pallada, ladies and gentlemen of the committee. It's, it's getting to the point now where, you know, I but go through this every year. Name. Just state your name for the record. Lou Zamorelli, I'm the president of the Babe Ruth League in, in North Providence. Um, as everyone knows, we've been using that field for over 50 years. We play a 100-game schedule. Every player on the high school for the last 10 years has been a graduate of our Babe Ruth League. Over the years, there's been more and more use and more and more requests for the field. And I understand that. And every permit that was issued, going back to when new leagues and new organizations came in, was always done in conjunction with the Babe Ruth League and at the discretion of the Babe Ruth League. And again, it's not my field, it's not the Babe Ruth League's field, it's the town's field. But for what we've done, this granting of the permit to us, another organization has put us in a position where we have to ask someone else to use the field on a particular day that they were granted a permit. And for what we've done for this town and what we've done at that field, it just shouldn't be that way just shouldn't be that way. I shouldn't have to waste my time and, and I shouldn't have to waste your time. You guys got more important things to do. Years ago, and I'm, I'm not talking that long ago, the permit was issued to Babe Ruth League. Someone else came, they were told go to Babe Ruth League and, and, use, and talk to them. And, and for what we've done, I think that's the way it should continue. I, I just can't see us losing days when I've got 100 games to schedule. I've got two state tournaments there this year. I've got two teams or three teams in the fall league. I've got two Legion teams which are gonna be using this. And the Legion teams are essentially the high school program kids that were also came from our program. And again, to just give someone a blanket permit to use a field on a weekends during the months of April, May, and June just puts us at such a hardship at this point in time. It, it, it's just not fair. Uh, so Mr. Zamorelli, Lou, I'm going to interrupt for just a second because um, when, when we granted this, I do recall in November, I said, this is not any one league that gets to say when they want it, but we've always in the past have said that whoever gets a permit to use that field, and by the way, we can't give them, we can't let them on the field without a permit and they have to show insurance to us, all right? But we've always said that the, the leagues have to work it out, some, out amongst themselves. And in the past, I've sat down, so I, I don't think it's a case where you have to go ask for the permission. I think it's a case where, um, you know, Maybe, the, maybe we need to have well, a Well, in a sense, if another organization has this field Saturday and Sundays, and I need it Saturday and Sundays, yeah. how am I going to use the field? I totally understand. And from my, from my understanding is it was Saturday and Sunday mornings. Point of the matter is they have, they have one team of 13 and 14-year-olds, which essentially are your middle school-aged children. There's a middle school field in the town. And I have no problem if, if we have, obviously, time available to, to, to allow these other teams on the field, because again, it's not my field, it's your field. But the point is, is that for all we've done and all we're gonna continue to do, I mean, j just recently in the fall, um, through the direction of Mr. Feroli, that 
a, a top-notch renovation was done at that baseball field. A badly needed renovation was done at that field. Now, every year we've dropped 2,000, 1,500, 2,500 into just dirt and sod. We didn't do it this year because we knew that the renovation was coming in the fall through the town. So the money we didn't spend there, now I'm in the process of putting in bullpens and redoing the batting cages. Now, <laughs> I don't know what else we can do to, to, you know, for, 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 for you guys to recognize that, you know what, no one's done more than the Bay Root League. No one's going to be able to do more than the Bay Root League. I they agree. really should have that permit for the time they need it and, 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 and grant the other te leagues, which we've always done. When they need the field, come to us. We'll be glad to let you use it. But I'll be damned if I'm going to go out there and ask somebody, look, you got the permit. Can we use the field during your time? It's just not going to happen. I, I understand where you're coming damned from. damned is not things we like to do at the school department. Uh, you know, maybe the answer is uh, a simple one, obviously. But I know we're talking in the town of North Providence uh, developing more fields. Is that correct, Mr. Faroli? Okay. I know that's down the road, not that far down the road either, right? So, uh, but in the meantime, that doesn't solve our problem, but at least uh, it's something we can look forward to. Now, I don't understand why, you know, somehow this can't be worked out. I, I do think Babe Ruth should have priority based on the fact that they been a, a good uh, partner with us with that field the money they spent there and all the work they've done there and the players they've turned out have been high school players I mean it's almost like a, a, a farm system for the high school so I don't know how the rest of the committee feels but gee it just seems like Mr. Zamorelli has a very good point here uh, Mr. Corsini yeah. uh, I've had the opportunity to work with Mr. Zamorelli with my child uh, he played Babe Ruth, and the work that they put into that field is uh, tremendous. Going by that field, coming home, they're on the field, rainy days, making sure the water's off of it. They're cleaning the uh, debris off the field, and they do so many uh, maintenance chores there that I think the Babe Ruth should have first priority on that field. That's my opinion. <coughs> Mr. Chairman. Very good. Mr. DeSilva, and then Mrs. Picard. Refer to Mrs. Picard. Mrs. Picard. Um, I would concur with my colleagues. I think that Mrs. Amorelli and his entire organization has done um, a great deal that actually has helped uh, us keep that field looking the way it looks. I don't think it would look that way without the, um, the work that they've put in and the money they've spent to help us um, not incur those costs. So I, I do appreciate all that they do for not only the, the children of the town, but the work they put into the, the field f so the students and the, our children have the opportunity to play. So I concur that we um, prioritize um, Babe Ruth. Mr. DeSilva? Um, again, the other children who come to the town and play is our all town children. And if, if I recall many years ago, we combined with Smithfield. And so our Babe Ruth is also takes in children from other towns. Um, and that's not an issue, it's from Smithfield. And that makes the league stronger, I suppose. Um, but I don't think it's a question of prioritizing. I think it's at this point it's just a question of sharing. Um, and I, the, the that junior league is going to look for one or two games a week for their spring baseball season. And we've already given them the um, uh, property usage. So my suggestion is we reach out to that junior league, and we can go through Mr. Faroli. And they can sit down in a, in a meeting and say, okay, these are the game dates we need. If it's a Sunday morning at 9 o'clock, then, um, then it's a Sunday morning at 9 o'clock. Just on a side note, we're doing an AAU program this year. The AAU programs play their double headers on Saturdays and Sundays. So, uh, again, and, and that's based upon the fact that I requested a permit in November from April through November, and that right. permit request was granted. Yep. I didn't expect anyone to come in <laughs> and take those two days away from not, me. Nor did we, but both were granted in, in November. Well, and, how did that uh, happen? That's what that school committee did. Well, so, and at the time I had said in the past, because we've, we've given it to Connie Mack, we've given it to anybody who wants to use that field. So in the past we've said that the leagues need to work it out. And I'm still of the opinion that it should be worked out. Well, our only request again, based upon everything that's happened over the 40-something years that I've been involved, that we be given a priority and that other leagues be given a permit subject to our permit. And, and, and I think that's fair. 
to everybody. I agree with that. And, and with respect to the out-of-town kids, that's correct. We do have them. But we've also taken in a lot of money from out-of-town families and from out-of-town businesses, which have helped our league maintain and, itself. And it's helped you be competitive throughout the that's state. Correct. That's important. Too. That's right. That's right. So, so nobody's going to, you know, my son played there three years. Three finals, won the President's Award his I last year, that. so I, I total respect for the Babe Ruth League. So let, let, me, uh, let me frame this and correct me if I, if I make a mistake. The, uh, the uh, previous school committee approved to have this additional league use the high school baseball field back in November. You know, excuse me, Mr. Chairman. That's I what I just found out. Yeah, I got to interject something here. Excuse I, me, I, hold on, Mr. Marciano. Okay. So, and y you put your request in also in November? Correct. And both were approved. And then the, there's conflict of times and use of field. If you go back to the tape, what you'll see is that Rod talks about the coordination like we always done with right. Babe Ruth. Right. And there's one other field in the town. Is that just uh, Birchwood? Correct. They took away Richie. Correct. Uh, yeah. So that's that's the context of the issue. Okay, Mr. Marciano. Well, basically, uh, just to re repeat what Mrs. Picard indicated as to the uh, those permits or motions were granted at that time based on the fact that they were going to be working this out. As a matter of fact, I think Rod, you said that they should be working it out. Right. But if it can't be worked out, in my opinion. Uh, clearly, uh, the Babe Ruth League should have priority. In, in terms of trying to work this out, Mr. Zamorelli is not going to go to the other league and get permission from them. It needs to be the other way around in order for this to be worked out. Why don't we I make mean, we can say this needs to be worked out, but we've, we've approved two organizations to use the field at the same time. Well, then I think we can make, I can make a motion that uh, the, the Babe Ruth League has priority for this uh, matter. Uh, for, th for this year? Yes. Seeing as we've already yep. granted two property usages and it's a town league and maybe next year we'll have an additional field, I would say let's set a meeting up together and have that smaller league come up with the schedule that they need and then they can present it to Mr. Zamorelli for... Uh, and we can work with Mr. Feroli. I'll be glad to sit at the meeting um, and see how many games there are and how that can fit. Maybe they don't want to play Saturday, Sundays. Maybe they can play another time that would fit Mr. Zamorelli's uh, piece there. Again, it's a spring baseball league. They'll be done by June. So, so potentially it would be games and tournaments that would, would have a conflict. Well, no, his tournaments won't be until um, later in the year. The, this, this league will be done by June. It it's, it's mirrors the, the baseball league, spring so baseball. So it would just be scheduling of games would be the conflict? Exactly, and on the weekends, because again, we, we do use the weekends for our tryouts. Our AAU team is going to be using the field for the weekends. We would potentially ha have an opportunity to also have a 13-year-old AAU team, which is 50-50 right now. And again, if that happens, you've got Saturday doubleheaders, Sunday doubleheaders. Okay, so Mr. Marciano, you made, a, you made a motion to have the Babe Ruth League have priority. Yes. That's on the floor. Is there a second to that? I'll second that. I'll second. Second by Mr. Corsini. Any additional questions or concerns? All those in favor of the motion to allow the Babe Ruth League to have priority, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. And, and again, every effort's going to be made to satisfy everyone. I, I, I just don't want to be put in a position where we have to take a back seat to another league, and that's, that's the bottom line, because we have 100 kids to deal with. They have 20. Thank you. Next item on the new business is discussion, approval of the plan recommended by the redistricting committee. Uh, the next step in this process is to review the plan with the school committee and to have the school committee take a formal, a formal vote on the plan. Mr. De Silva. Yes. Is this on?
you still there. <laughs> okay, so um, I'd like to thank Dr. Pilata for giving me work I didn't need. I mean, uh, putting me as chairperson of this. It was effective. We saved the town money. We, were, we went out to uh, bid. It was $60,000 and couldn't meet our March deadline. And here we are at the end of February, and we think we have a plan. And um, shortly, they'll, this will be up, and I'm going to thank all of those principals and community members and uh, PTO presidents who participated, in particular, Mr. Faroli, who gave us his expertise, Mr. Nahesian, with his communication, and Mr. Westcott, who's the planner. Is this the first slide of the, um, is this the first slide of the PowerPoint? I thought he was staying here. No. Okay. Not the first slide. I, okay, we don't have the PowerPoint coming up here? All right, I'll just speak to this. This is the uh, map that we- Who has that? You have that, Ralph? Chairman, I have a copy if somebody in the audience would like to follow along. I'll speak to the map. The, uh, this is the map that was voted on by the subcommittee. You want me to go? Yeah, before you, before you get, get started, Mr. DeSova, let me... Uh, explain prior to the uh, prior to the map so the general public has an understanding um, okay. yeah. we we set up a redistricting committee where we had representation from every school in the district we had approximately almost 20 people who served on this committee we had four meetings January 30th February 6th February 13th and February 20th we met and we reviewed three plans and we reviewed them very thoroughly. We answered any questions that anyone had during the four meetings. And what you're going to see now is what you have in front of you is the plan that was voted on by the redistricting committee. It was a unanimous decision to go with this plan and Mr. De Silva will explain the plan to you, but the primary uh, reason for selecting the plan was to make a decision which would benefit the entire district. Not a particular school, not a particular section, but that would uh, be an advantage for the entire district, not only now, but going forward. So that was the premise of how this plan was selected. And after Mr. De Silva reviews the, uh, reviews the, the plan, um, I will tell you that on March 7th, the school committee approves the plan. We will take the plan out to the community. Uh, a meeting will be held at the high school uh, auditorium on March 7th from 6 to six to eight, we will present this plan to the community and address any questions or concerns that the public may have. We also set up an appeals process. Any parent or family who wants to appeal the decision of where their child is going to school, they'll have an opportunity to meet with an appeals committee the week of March 11th to the 22nd. And again, all of this will be uh, advertised to the general public. We also have informed the bus company that we would like projected bus routes by April 22nd. So the school committee can approve the bus routes by April 24th. So by the end of April, the plan is complete. So the bus company certainly can have practice runs, work out any glitches with transportation that need to be worked out and hopefully everything will be in place by sometime in May and we'll be ready to go certainly uh, for the school year. And uh, Mr. De Silva mentioned um, 
at the beginning that it's, it's our intent to make sure we satisfy every family. However, we're realists. We know we can't satisfy every family. Every family is not going to be satisfied. We understand that. But we had to make a decision in the best interest of the school district. I'd be happy if we get 75 to 80 percent of the people that are happy with the, with the redistricting plan. And as Mr. De Silva indicated in his opening remarks, um, when we put this out to bid, we got one company who said they could not complete this in the time frame that we gave, it, gave them. And that was at a cost of $60,000. So we averted the cost of $60,000 by pulling together the people within the community to get the job done. And I, I just want to say before Mr. DeSilva addresses the map that he put in many, many, many hours in reviewing all the information, reviewing every street, every student, and every school. He worked closely with, with Ralph Nahesian, the uh, tech director, and Mr. Faroli, a facilities director, to make sure that what we were doing, we were staying on task. A lot of hours were put into this into this work. And the people that served on the committee, we thank them very much because they also provided some very insightful questions that we had to answer that we wanted to make sure that we answered the correct, answered the correct, uh, answered the problems correctly. Excuse me. So a lot of work and many hours were put into this. And uh, at this time, I'm gonna have Mr. De Silva explain to you the map. Um, just go through that PowerPoint, it'll show up. There's your redistricting committee members. It was uh, everyone, council, police officer, community members. Click. Uh, those are the four meeting dates. All our dates were transparent. They were here in the library. They were advertised on the Secretary of State website. Uh, they were posted throughout the town, as all public meetings are. So they were public meetings. And we had input from people who were not on the redistricting committee who came and asked questions. And we uh, constantly, are there any comments? Are there any questions? Click. This is the map that we came up with. Um, over the, There were three proposals. This one makes the most sense for a variety of reasons. And it wasn't only Maryville that was um, redistricted. So north, we, we looked at some geographic and street guidelines. So north of Middle Spring Avenue from Pawtucket, to Lincoln, which is Maryville School right now, all the way through the Lewis Quisset area, all the way past Douglas Avenue and down to Stephen Only is now the new Stephen Only district. Whalen is south of Middle Spring, Middle Spring Avenue, and it goes all the way to the Stephen Only uh, Douglas Avenue, so it expands a little bit on the west on the uh, western side and a whole lot on the eastern side, but we took out that northern section. So that is now Stephen only. If you recall, when the middle schools were open, there was a whole section of Lyman'sville that went to Greystone um, because there was nowhere else to go because Greystone was a K through eight, Centerdale was a K through eight, Ritchie was a K through eight, McGuire was K through six. So when Ritchie became K through eight, there, were no, there was no school for Lyman'sville. That was their school. So they ended up at Greystone. What we did is we extended the line to Intervale, which, which is where Richie is, and shifted all those students, instead of go, jumping a school and going to Greystone, geographically now they are touching McGuire, Food Hill Avenue, it was the same concept. A bus comes in, and instead of going up Wanasquatucket, now they go into um, McGuire. There was a section above Centerdale, north of Middle Spring Avenue, that is now feeding Greystone. So Centerdale has gotten smaller. Greystone has maintained itself. McGuire obviously is bigger. Now, when Maryville was closed and the two tracks, the two Ks, the two ones, the two twos were taken out of Maryville, they weren't put at a school geographically close to Maryville. They were put one track or half of the Ks at Stephen only and the other half at McGuire. So in a thoughtful way and geographically, um, you know, proximity way of looking at this, it's clean. We're not, I mean, there were other proposals and they were, they were good, but they were not as um, clean, easy to see, 
um, focused on bus routes, and that was another thing that came up, evacuation, bus routes, and the ability to, in this model, avoid Middle Spring Avenue because your bus routes can literally go through the back and drop off into all those neighborhoods. Um, and so that, there it is. Uh, one, of the, did, one of the things the committee did do was vote to send all special permissions back to their new home school. We have that data. And so part of the appeals process will be to deal with people who want to not be in that new district, new district school, um, but want to be in the original school that we've sent them back from. It was, quite frankly, um, you know, there were buses running all over the town, so this is cleaner. Um, and there are many children who, in their new home school, are now, it is their new home school. They had a special permission to go to the school that is now their home school. Um, but that was, that was part of, we recommended doing that. Um, so as you vote tonight, on this map, and you're also voting to send all of the children back to their home school, start that process over again through the superintendent's office, and um, I think the school committee has to make uh, a decision later about how that will work um, in terms of the process or the protocol being used. Um, those are the projected populations which do not involve kindergarten children. So we took all of the rising fifth graders out and just went with the current K, two, three, four. Actually, I think, Ralph, yours do project kindergarten projections on those numbers. Mine were lower because I, I didn't, but yours do. The new printed map we have to be yes. used for tomorrow yes. have the correct numbers. On okay, all right. Yeah, I didn't even see that, whoops. There's a map in the back. Um, and that's what we, that, you know, simulates this map, that's what we did. We also have to look at, and as part of the, of the process, is what we're doing with busing and that busing policy, the uh, special permission policy, um, but that's something that the, the subcommittees are now, are now looking at. As, is there anything, uh, that Mr. P Dr. Pilato alluded to this community forum for the elementary school families. This is an appeal um, form and that appeal process will be communicated. It's my understanding Mrs. Picard wants to make some changes to that and that's fine. <laughs> we, we, we don't have a problem with that and there's uh, our expectation of bus routes and when that will be presented to you. Um, and I think that's just about it. I would do want to thank everyone who served on that. Everyone came every meeting and really participated. We got a lot of work done, and I think it's in the best interest of all the children of the town. We tried to make it as clean and fair as possible, knowing that there was going to be disruptions. Um, but when you close the school and you open two more, um, you know, we realized all of those Maryville children were going to be bussed somewhere, and I think uh, it's going to work out just fine. Um. Just one more thing. I, I, I know I talked to that committee every time we met, and I'd say the children play, and one basketball league and they play in one soccer league and they pl now play in one basket uh, baseball league, one football league and now um, in terms of going to school, they're going to school in one school district and there'll be some movement around that geographically. Mrs. Picard? Just a um, couple of things. One, if I know, um, unless I missed you saying it, that we're not changing addresses for middle schools. No. So there was no change, so whatever address you went to, and went to Birchwood, that would stay the same, same as Ritchie, so that there's no issue there. Right. As far as, uh, uh, Mr. Silver was correct, the appeals form, it's just, um, for me, it's a, a matter of clarity. For example, there's no place for grade. There's just little tweaks that have to be made for consistency, like the bottom where it says committee decision. It doesn't have an approved box or a denied box, just to clean it up so it's, um, it, it looks Correct, and grammatically, we don't use abbreviations before we give people what the abbreviations are. Um, was, for example, there's no grade listed. Grade, so for example, uh, yep, we need to, there's no, for example, it should have an office use only box so you can add the student ID number in the office when it gets submitted, um, and the parents obviously know their grade, so it could say current grade 1819, projected grade for 1920. Um, at the beginning, it just says student's last name, but it just says first, just to, as a point of clarity, first name, 
the contact information, spell out the word instead of just using the abbreviation because there's nowhere. And again, we have parents who speak different languages. I would recommend that this form be both in Spanish and in English. And then um, reason for appeal, I'm not sure what the blue shaded area is, if it's just a, like because of this or it doesn't, maybe doesn't show. But where it says, yeah, it's on, the sh it's on here. I'm not sure if it shows no, up there. That's, that's but where it says um, at the bottom, committee decision, there should be a box for approval or denial. So it's clear. And by the way, whose signature goes on there? Is that principal signature, superintendent signature, or the appeals committee? Things like that. And my only other thing would be about um, Mr. Massey, and I'm thinking we might want to have him give some updates at the next few meetings because we're moving to a situation where um, my understanding is report cards went back, we got a lot of envelopes that were returned. Um, we should be following up. Okay, why don't you forward those to Mr. Goho, he'll forward those to the uh, chair of the appeals committee for the correction. The other, the other thing I would add is that these maps are gonna be placed um, in all the schools. So when parents come, come to the schools, they're able to see their street and uh, school that their child will be attending. So you said that you were able to blow these maps up and put them in the schools. They'll be that size. Yeah. Yet in the far right hand corner, the list of all the streets will actually be present too. Okay. They don't know where it is on the map. And who's gonna be responsible for doing that? Bill, with the committee's approval, I'll have my guys take care of okay. them. Okay, thank you. Any other questions on the uh, proposal for the redistricting program? Hearing none, I'll entertain a motion to approve the redistricting plan. You want a motion? Can I yes. make the motion? I can make the motion. I'll make a motion to approve the redistricting policy as submitted and thank Rod for all his work on this. I'll second that. Okay, motion by Mrs. Picard, seconded by Mr. Pollock. Any questions? All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? The motion carries. Once again, thank you, Mr. On this, changes on the uh, appeals form, and uh, the maps will go up in the schools, and hopefully um, we will begin to get the information out in terms of what was voted on this evening. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chair. Just a note to the committee: so the elementary principals uh, have developed a flyer that they're gonna send out tomorrow advertising the March 7th uh, community forum that's open to all families at six o'clock as Dr. Pilata said. So that will be going home uh, via the listservs of all the elementary schools tomorrow and it also will be going home hard copy with the children to bring home to their parents. And I believe the redistricting committee also mentioned potentially advertising in the breeze. So we will contact that office as well. So we'll do that. Um, and notify families that they are welcome to come to hear the redistricting plan that has been voted upon and that'll be on March 7th. We also have uh, a staffing meeting scheduled for uh, Friday at one o'clock where we will start to look at this redistricting and the numbers and where the children are gonna be located and put together a preliminary uh, staffing map of where we need to allocate programs and teachers and kids and then have follow-up meetings uh, from there to develop a, a, a process to fill those positions. Thank you, Mr. Gaho. Next item on the agenda is approval of bills. Discussion. I will entertain a motion for us to approve the bills. Motion made to approve the bills. Motion made by Mr. De Silva. Is there a second? I'll second with discussion. I'll ask the same question I've asked. Second by Mrs. Picard. Discussion, Mr. Andriozzi and then Mrs. Picard. Uh, thank you. So, uh, again, this, uh, Ron, uh, I don't know why it keeps coming up, but uh, Sherwin Williams shows up again an awful lot, and there seems to be 
Sherwin Williams, for instance, 47.20, then it looks like a minus 47.20, and then Sherwin Williams, 53.18, then it looks like it's minus 53.18. It's back in again, looks like it's coming out, in again, out, in again, out. I'm, I'm just, I'm, I don't understand it. It's the only places where you show a minus. And, uh, you know, the, the, uh, w what is that? Are we paying 47? Are we getting a credit of 47? W w what is it? And then I have another follow-up question when you after that question. And thank you. Those are credits for previous purchases. Those are credits for previous purchases. Can I, can I ask that? I don't know if this can be done, but for instance, I know there's POs attached to everything that we do here. Um, we're, we're approving bills, and in a lot of instances, I have no idea what they're for. So for instance, I'm gonna use these Sherwin-Williams just because they're in front of me now. Is there any way, shape, or form where there can be a small parenthesis that just says, like SOS, so I know it was used for Stephen Only School or you know McGuire or something that, that can tell me as a school committee member where this paint was used or where uh, you know this, this um, you know, Cartridge World stuff was used at, whether it was central office or at a school. Um, again, I, I, I know the POs come and, I, and, and you see them, but we don't. And I have no idea where some of this stuff is going. And I'd just like to know if there was a way where I at least could know where it's going. So the POs just started about a month ago. And some of the items listed here have been researched by our staff um, in addition to using some uh, information from Jim and his team actually right on the paint boxes where uh, on the paint cans where the paint's being used so if it's in central office they're listed right on the paint can but that's something you know maybe in the future we can um, update on our POs so we're tracking w our expenditures a little bit better so furniture and so forth so if a piece of furniture comes in from somewhere WB Mason or something, we, we, we're tagging it, knowing that it's going to North Providence High School and we're removing a piece of furniture you know, from North Providence High School. Are we doing that with our POs just so that we, we're keeping some track? All purchases that we set up now and we're still um, developing this process, but they have a unique identifying code in the uh, accounting system. So uh, each there's a location code tagged to every expenditure. Perfect. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Mr. Andrews, you make a good point, though, about the uh, inventory tags. We haven't been as um, vigilant with that. I haven't seen that um, as well as it was done in the past, so that when a piece of furniture or equipment arrives to the district, we used to get these little silver and blue tags that says property of North Providence School Department. So we need to be more vigilant to make sure that that, that does occur when, when furniture comes in. Ralph? Okay. Well, thank you for that. But we, yeah, we do your answer about you know closely tracking the expenses and the delivery of the equipment. I guess is a viable alternative to that. Mrs. Picard. So my question, um, I, I concur with Mr. Andreozzi that uh, I agree that sometimes not knowing, so it just has a, a person's name. I'm not sure what it's for. It's reimbursement of some kind. But I think this is how we fall into a trap of what was that for. How are we budgeting back at the schools to ensure that th that money is not necessarily put out be from an individual so it's budgeted at, at our cost and not uh, reimbursed? And if it is reimbursed, what is it for? But also, just to clarify, Ron, everything I'm looking at will follow the state law and bid and purchasing um, laws and policies as per the state guidelines and federal guidelines? To the best of my knowledge. Thank you. Any other questions? Okay, there's a motion on the floor to approve the bills. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. To address the committee, we have no pending business. We, ha we have use of property.
I apologize for that. Okay. Item number 10, uh, use of property requests. I'll make a motion to approve the use of property request as submitted. I do have one change. I'll second that. Any questions on the motion? All those in favor? Oh, hold on. I just have, yeah. I have just a follow-up. Sorry. That's okay. There's a, for the LAC committee, it, there's a meeting from March 6th noted at 630. I received an email that that meeting was canceled, so just make a note to remove that off the use of property requests. Oh, made that motion with the amendment. I'll make the motion uh, to approve the use of property requests as submitted with the removal of the North Providence LAC team meeting on March 6th being removed per, per an email that I received that it was canceled. Mr. DeSilva, you second that? Yes. Any other questions? All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. I'll make a motion to approve and seal the executive session minutes on February 11th and January 23rd. For, se for which one? The 23rd? There were no executive sessions either one. There's none? So then I'll just say, because that's what's listed. You already did that part of consent. You did it? Yeah, it was in front of Then why did you tell me that? Then I'll make a motion to adjourn. <laughs> hold on, hold on. Hold on. We have no request to address the committee, no pending business. Any questions from the public regarding anything on the agenda? Before we adjourn, the superintendent has an announcement. So upon conclusion of this meeting, I will be going uh, on my iPad and informing the Rhode Island Broadcasters Association and sending out a sky alert that we will have a one hour delay in North Providence schools tomorrow due to the forecast for inclement weather at the morning commute. Motion now to I'll adjourn. I entertain a motion to adjourn. Mrs. Picard. Motion to adjourn. Seconded by Mr. DeSilva. All those in favor? Opposed? Motion carried. Meeting adjourned. Thank you very much.